Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here with another art journal layout. Today I'm going to play with some stamp sets. These are brand new by Paper Artsy. I've seen them while I was in Creativation and I fell in love with them. So today I'm going to play with those. Now, as you can see, they are similar designs, so you can mix and match stamps from each of those sets or just use one of them. I love these flowers because they are nice and big, so they make great focal points. And that's why I will be working on my 8x8 disc bound journal today. This is watercolor paper and it takes all kinds of mediums great. For adding uh, color on my background, I will be playing with my Paper Archie Chalky Finish acrylic paints and um, I love them because they come in uh, such a big range of colors and um, some of them are opaque, there are others that are translucent and even semi-opaque, so you can play around with those. Also these paints give you a lovely chalky finish. And to spread uh, my paint quickly and easily, I have sprayed water all over my surface. This is uh, going to help me to quickly cover up everything every time I'm dipping my brush to a different color. This is a great technique which is going to give you a quick and easy background, but at the same time it's not going to be flat. Now I'm going to do some stenciling. I'm using an old stencil from Paper Razzi that I had in my stash. I am using the part of the stencil with all those uh, little uh, circles. I'm going to use the darkest of uh, the paints that I have on my craft mat. And I'm just dabbing through the stencil, adding some visual texture at my background. Now I'm not going to do lots of techniques at the background today, I'm going to keep it quick and simple since I am planning to add big focal points at the front. Now I'm going to do some stamping, I'm using a text stamp that I had in my stash, I'm using uh, archival ink and uh, I believe this is cornflower. You will find the links uh, down below to everything I'm using as always. So I'm going to stamp uh, all over the place just to have some visual texture again. Now I'm going to create a border, for that I'm using the same stencil as uh, I used before and my black uh, paint. With a brush I'm going to follow the edge of this stencil and I'm going to create a border all around. Today's art journal is actually quite easy and it's great for beginners, uh, plus it doesn't require too many supplies. So you can uh, use your regular acrylic paints that you have at home, you can even uh, tear a piece of paper copy paper to create um, an edge like the one that I have on my stencil to create your border. And for the flowers that I will be using as stamps later on, you can always draw your own, cut them out and stick them, just follow the steps that I am doing. A go-to technique for my backgrounds is always adding splashes, white and black, because I know that later on I will be using these two colors white for my highlighting and black for the borders and the lines of my stamped images. Now when it comes to splashes I always like to dilute my paint with water to make it more runny and I always like to use a fine brush just because uh, it helps me control the splashes more if you can control them and um, I don't like to have big blots of uh, color all over the place, I like them to be small now my background is ready, I've left it aside to dry and I'm working on my focal points. So I, I picked some flowers and some leaves from my stamps. I'm going to stamp them with black archival ink and I'm using my stamping platform just because I want to stamp everything uh, at once. I have to do it uh, a couple of times though just to get a good impression. And I'm working on mixed media paper by Ranger. For coloring my images I'm using again uh, Fresco Finish Paint by Paper Archie and you can see the name of each color on your screen. Now as I mentioned before in the range they have uh, opaque, semi-opaque and translucent colors. Now for coloring my images I went with uh, translucent colors and all these are translucent so as you can see when I go over the lines I don't cover up all the details. Now as you can see I'm mixing the colors directly on my image, I'm not going for the best blending there, I just want to have a basic uh, layer of color since I will be working on top of it later on. And I also don't care if I go outside the lines because I will be using my scissors to cut out the images later on. I'm also going to apply my green color on all the leaves. 
Now I'm going to work on the coloring of these flowers and adding some shading with my big brush markers. Of course you don't really need to do that, you can always work with your acrylic paints and finish off the coloring with those. I always find it easier to do it with my big brush markers, it is quicker for me and I really love this method. I did this for the flowers as well, just to add a darker shade. And now it's time for some fuzzy cutting. I am going to cut out the leaves as well as those two flowers. I know some people don't like fuzzy cutting, I just find it very therapeutic and um, I like to cut out things. Actually paper piecing is one of my favorite techniques when it comes to art journaling. So I just put on my favorite music and I just cut out all the leaves and the flowers. Now I'm doing some stamping directly on my page. So I end up having all the leaves and uh, the stems in place and now I'm going to try and decide where all those flowers are going to go on my page and then I'm going to draw a stem for my orange flower and I'm trying to follow the same design as the rest of the stems. And now it's time to put everything together, so I will start sticking everything down. For doing so I'm going to use my matte medium the best thing about using matte medium for paper piecing is that it dries completely transparent and it's not shiny at all, so you can't really tell where you have applied it. Now I'm going to use a white marker and I'm going to go all around the edges and just define that line there. Before you go ahead and use any markers on top of your layout, always make sure that uh, matte medium is totally dry because if uh, that tip of the marker touches matte medium just because it's glue, it's going to ruin your tip. Now here I have uh, some of my acrylic uh, paint markers and uh, I absolutely love them. These are deco markers by Pebeo and um, I love that uh, they come with different nibs so you can uh, grab any tip that you like. I actually went with 1.2 and I also love that they have an extra tip for you, an extra nib. So if you ruin uh, your actual nib by mistake then you can change it. The first time you open them you need to prep them, so all you do is to just shake the marker like I did here and then press the nib down. And after a few seconds you will see that the paint will start to flow. Now the difference between these markers which are actually acrylic markers and the big brush markers that I used earlier for shading is transparency. So the big brush markers by Faber-Castell that I used earlier are totally transparent and they will not cover up any color underneath they will not cover up the black lines. These markers are opaque, which means that uh, you can add details on top of another color and it's going to cover it up completely, but of course it's going to cover up the black lines as well. So both of these markers have different uses. They come in a big range of colors. As I'm using them, you can see the name of uh, the color that I'm using on your screen every time. And you can see here that I'm using oranges and yellows on top of a red base, how nicely they write and how they cover up the color underneath. These stamps that I use today are designed by Joffy for Paper Artsy and I love that I have, uh, they have more designs inside the flowers. So that's uh, what I'm doing here, I'm playing with all those inside designs and I'm adding color with my acrylic markers which is going to help all those inside designs to pop against the main flower. My page is pretty much finished here. I'm going to add my quote for the day that says life is good, look on the bright side. These are some stickers that I have from a Tim Holtz booklet. I had lots of fun creating this page just because I used many of my favorite techniques such as paper piecing. I'm going to put back this page on my disc bound 8x8 art journal. Don't forget that you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used today down below the description area as well as on my blog. At the end of this video as well as on my blog you will find close-up photos of this project. I hope I have inspired you today to go and create something colorful, perfect for spring. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.